Dylan Cease going to the San Diego Padres and the White Sox acquiring a bevy of guys. Drew Thorpe, Jairo Iriarte, Stephen Wilson and Samuel Zavala. Drew Thorpe, by the way, number 95, the MLB.com prospects. We're going to get to this, uh, number 85, excuse me, we're going to get to this coaching tree, GM tree in just a second. But first, Al, I can't wait. Al, talk about Dylan Cease as the pitcher because a couple years ago, yeah. he was second for the Cy Young this past year, inflated ERA. But what do you like about That's it? That's right. So uh, you set it up perfectly. Two years ago, he was one of the top pitchers in baseball. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, he ERA-wise, dropped off a lot. Mm -hmm. His walks went up. He had the best slider in 2022, or best pitch, which was his slider. It was a 128 batting average against. Look, when I, I, I like Dylan Cease. When I Look at certain guys that have attitude and they trust their stuff. You can see the ability behind what he does. I want to show this, folks. I'm not going to drill into serious analytics and data, but the FIP is what you can control as a pitcher. Get walks, strikeouts, and home runs, you, the, those things you control. If you look at this in, 20, in 22 when he was second to Verlander and Cy, not much of a difference of his FIP, which is a, an ERA at 3-1 and then the 3-7-2. So everybody looks like, oh, my God, he went from 2-2 two, two to 4-5-8. I like this guy. I watch him a lot. He, he leans on his slider a lot. He's a guy that does doesn't give up or or throttle back. He's a max effort guy. I mean, this sounds like out of control, but I don't think he gives up the count, and I don't think he gives up his his best. So do you? Feel and if it means that, as a result of that, you get the three walks or maybe four walks in a game, that's. But that's do you okay. feel like the lack of fastball command in 23 led to the lack of swing and misses that he used to get in 22 on his slider? Yes. And I also think the uh, the predictability for a guy who leans on his slider as much as right. he does. Because you did that a lot too, didn't you? Yeah, I had a cutter. But I, I had a manager in Bobby Valentine. I was like, Bobby, don't worry about pitch count. And I know we're in a different era. But I, I'm not going to give in. I'm not giving in. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be inner third off the plate. So let me ask you about ballpark factors now too. Because, I mean, yeah. Chicago's a neutral ballpark. Now he's going to Petco, which yeah. is by far – a pitcher's ballpark with an excellent defense behind him. So from a pitcher's mindset, does that also elevate his approach and his attack to the hitter? Shouldn't be. You know, uh, those are the exterior distractions that you shouldn't allow in. I know, but knowing that you got a ballpark, if you don't make yes. a mistake, it's not going to, it's probably at nighttime, you're not going to give up a long ball. And if you get the ball on the ground, it's going to be an out. Especially on my 2 0 outer half fastball that I don't think I have to thread a needle. You're right, you're right. Uh, it, it, you, you throw it, you throw a fastball right on right. I go outer third. That's usually somewhere left center, right center. So if I do have a forgiving outfield, as you just described, and you're right, Chicago is about neutral and definitely at the night in nighttime. With Fresh footage, think. by the way. This is good to see. See, is a Padre. Yeah, look at this. Uh, I think it, I think it's great. They need him. Um, I think uh, this rotation now, it looks really good. Darvish, Musgrove, and him, that's pretty good three. Yes, yes. And throw in Michael King. Yes, absolutely. Very yeah. good the Yankees year ago. All right, you always hear in football, the Andy Reid coaching tree. You're big into trees, All I right. understand. Go ahead. All right, so it might be a little crazy. I but can't just wait bear with me because we got the <laughs> Why next would I think that's manager. not a shock? All right, <laughs> so I thought about coming in here. Jeremy, our producer. Yeah, and I was like, Wow, I was thinking about, like, you know, let's talk about Nick Saban, the coaching tree, and Bill yeah. Belichick, the coaching tree. Right. So on the top here, we have Juan Soto, right? And then these players in the tree are those that in a circuitous route from the Nationals to the Padres to the Yankees, the White Sox, all of that stuff, that's what they have, the Padres do, from the one guy at the top of that tree. Now, you see all the leaves that have fallen off. These are the guys that were part of the Padre organization that are now either in Chicago, they're either in New York, or obviously uh, at the Nationals in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Well, the, the one player in uh, New York is, uh, is Grisham. That is 10 prospects I just countered. Thank you. Look at this. Yeah. Take a look at this. I think you might like this. So Dylan Cease, th what, my point was this. And I, for, for Juan Soto, one great player is going to sign for a boatload, right? The pot, this is what the Padres have right now. And all of those players on the left, outside of Dylan Cease, came from the Yankee organization. So you have a, a, an ace pitcher, potentially. You have right now what would be your fourth starter, Michael King. Let's see what Brito, big arm, Vasquez. You got a backup catcher. But look what they gave up, uh, A.J. Preller and the Padres. And I know you have to do that to get, but this is what it is, Cease. And those, those pitchers on the left with a backup catcher. But you could field a major league team 
with either major league players or or guys that are knocking on the door right now. The, the one the one is Trent Grisham. He's going to be in the outfield with the Yankees. But that's a lot of players since August 2nd of 2022. How many did you say? 15? There's 10 prospects there. I didn't count like Grisham and right. Luke Voigt that were major league players. I think there's 16 deal. players. I just thought, I thought, you know, when you have an impact player like that mm -hmm. and the unusual nature of when you trade for a guy in August from the Nationals to San Diego, he's a year, year and two months, and now in December he gets traded to the Yankees, and all of that occurred? A lot. Well, I don't know why I'm. I think it's cool. But, but AJ Preller is unafraid to make some moves. And there that's you go. The biggest thing that you've recognized yeah. too, Dan. He is excellent as a talent evaluator. I'll tell you. The, yeah. When I look at that tree, the one thing that stands out at me is that how good are the Padres scouting and development group? Mm -hmm. Because they can make that volume of a deal to get Soto and turn around and make a volume deal to get Cease. You think they would have wiped their system out, which all of us said when they made the Soto deal. Mm -hmm. And then, as Al talked about, not a long time later, they acquired a top of the rotation starter. So. Got to give those evaluators and development people in the Padre organization a lot of credit. Yeah. Did Drew the, Thorpe. Did the, did the tree come out the way he how wanted to? How long did Drew Thorpe? <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I don't know. <laughs> Drew Thorpe, how long was he a Padre in a Padre hat? Well, he, he got in had spring good, training. Yeah, a good yeah. spring training for him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Good job, Mr. Leiter. Appreciate that. All right.